Learn how to use every tool in Photoshop. In this video, you will meet every tool in Photoshop, learn their many functions, and see how to use them to create outstanding designs. Without much ado, let's get started. This video is brought to you by Brand and Graphics channel, and my name is Vincent Annie. You may want to research your workspace to make your screen look like mine. So go to Window, Workspace, and Reset Essentials. The Photoshop tools live on this bar at the left-hand corner known as the Toolbar. When you select a tool that has options, the available options for that tool will appear on the Context Sensitive Options bar above. If you see this triangle at the lower right of a tool icon, it means you can expand the tool to show hidden tools beneath. If you position your pointer on any tool icon, Photoshop will display the name of the tool. You can customize your toolbar to appear in two columns when you click here. Photoshop tools can be grouped according to functionalities. But in this tutorial, I want to go through the toolbar from top to bottom. You will see practical demonstrations of how to use each tool. If you want to practice along but you don't have the Photoshop software, click on the link below to download a free trial version of Photoshop. Let's meet the first group of tools, Move Tool and Artboard Tool. Let's start with the Move Tool. Shortcut is V. Use the Move tool to move an image, a selection, or a layer. This is one of the tools you are going to be using quite often, I guarantee you. Select the Move tool, click and drag to move image. That didn't work because the selected layer is locked. Unlock the layer by clicking on this padlock and now we can move the image. There are three layers on the layer panel. Use the Move tool to select a layer. Resize the image. Let's turn on the visibility of the layer containing our text. You can rotate it, reposition it. The Artboard tool shortcut is letter V. The Artboard tool allows you to design multiple layouts for different screen sizes or devices. It's like creating more custom pages in a Microsoft Word document. For example, I used this photo to create this design. Then I created multiple Artboards to help me choose the best color for the car. You can select a preset size or you customize. Beside the color, change the orientation of your artboard at any time. To add a new artboard, click and drag. Add more artboards by clicking on the plus sign. Next group, the marquee tools. We have the rectangular marquee tool and the elliptical marquee tool. Use marquee tools to make selections that are rectangular or elliptical in shape. Select the rectangular marquee tool, shortcut is letter M. Click and drag to select a rectangular shape or a square shape. Hold shift to select a perfect square. Release shift to select a rectangle. Select this wall frame. Go to edit and copy. Then paste. Drag the duplicate. Hold the alt or option key. Click and drag to duplicate. You can fix three different images on these frames right now. If your selection doesn't align with the frame you are trying to select, simply hold the space bar on your keyboard, move the selection to align properly, and complete your selection. We would like to darken this part of the shower glass. So we select the layer, go to Adjustment, select Curve, and drive this down. You see the problem? The entire screen is being darkened instead of part of it. Let me undo with Ctrl Z. To darken part of the shower glass, use rectangular marquee tool to select this middle column. To add this column to the selection, go to the option panel. This is for new selection. Subtract from selection. Intersect with selection. So select this or hold shift to add to our selection. To remove the middle column from the selection, click here or hold the Alt or Option key while you drag. Ctrl Z. Now that the two columns are selected, let's apply the curve again. Only the two selected columns are darkened. Very good. To replace this frame picture with this couple's photo, we will first select the area we want to replace. Select the image. Move this picture over here. 
The selection is smaller than the picture, but that's not a problem. Come down here and click on the layering mask to hide the rest of the image. Let's adjust the image. The photo is linked to the mask. On link, now select only the picture. Now you can adjust. Very good. Use elliptical marquee tool shortcut M to select this type of shape. Create a new layer using Ctrl J on your keyboard. Turn off the visibility to reveal the selection. Move it over here. That's how I transferred this logo to this car and this number plate to this car. Next, single marquee tools. We have single row marquee tool and single column marquee tool. These tools can be used as guides or to create good designs. They select a single row or column of pixels. Let me show you how to use them to create good designs. Select this and click on this image source. Copy the single row of pixels and paste it here. Then expand, hold shift. Do the same with the single column marquee tool. This can be used for a hardcover notebook, journals, and so on. Let's look at another design. Select the vertical marquee tool and click on this page. Go to Edit, Stroke, change the stroke size, color, location to your preference. Repeat with the row. Then use the paint pocket to add fills. Next group, the lasso tools. We have lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, and the magnetic lasso tool. These tools are used to make more or less freehand selections. Let's begin with the regular lasso tool. The shortcut is letter L. With this tool, you can make a freehand selection. Let's try to select this. That didn't go well. The marquee tool should have been used here instead. The standard lasso tool is best when you are selecting irregular shapes, like tracing wiggly lines. Let's try it here. Very good. Now let's apply adjustment. Let's create a dirty patch on this rug that suggests that someone spilled the tea on the rug. Use the lasso tool to make a selection. Then apply adjustment. Polygonal lasso tool shortcut is letter L. Use this tool to select images with straight line shapes and corners just like this building. Hold shift to lock it on a straight line. Select the layer. Duplicate the layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Turn off the visibility of the lower layer to reveal the selection. Magnetic lasso tool. Shortcut letter L. Use this where there is a significant contrast in the image. Just like this blue and white. Let's select this dome. Smooth edges, smooth selection, width is 10 pixels. Notice how it derails as I move away from the edge. Use the backspace to go back by deleting the anchor points. Increase the width to 50 pixels. And now it doesn't derail. It continues to snap to the edges, even as I move away from the edge. Now select the dome and change the color. 
I will speed up the selection of the outer boundaries. To subtract these areas from the selection, click this or hold the Alt or Option key. If you end up liking this video, please create a playlist on your YouTube home and save it for future references. And don't forget to like, hit the notification bell, and subscribe for more videos like this. Next group is Automatic Selection Tools. We start with Object Selection Tool. Shortcut is letter W. You are familiar with these options. When the object finder is not checked, select the lasso or rectangle and draw around the object to make a selection. Turn on the object finder and Photoshop will analyze the image. Here we have four persons and the rest is the background. It chooses to separate this guy from his heart, but that's not a problem at all. Select this guy. Hold shift and click this and Photoshop will reanalyze and add the heart to the selection. To add this omitted portion, select the lasso, hold shift and draw. Now we have a complete image selection. We can now add new persons to our selection. Hold shift and click on her. When nothing is selected, we click on select subject and Photoshop will automatically select the subject. The quick selection tool. Short course is letter W. Use the quick selection tool to select the specific area of an image. Click once to select this. Hold the Alt or Option key to subtract this part. Now change the color of the selection to match the upper part. Click once to select the dome. Click and drag to select the sky. Hold Alt or Option key to subtract these areas. The Magic Wand tool. Short course is W. The Magic Wand tool selects the pieces with similar colors in one click. Point sample selects a point of pizzer. Y3 by 3 average selects larger sample. The more you increase, the larger the sample. Notice that the domes aren't selected even when the tolerance level is increased from 10 to 30. Uncheck contiguous to allow the one cross over and make selections. To remove background, click once. Next group, crop tool. Shortcut is letter C. Use the crop tool to trim images. Let's crop out a passport photograph from this image. Click on the image and reposition it. Click done and you have your passport photograph. To add a border to an image, select the crop tool and simply expand the borders of the image. You can crop using custom width, height, and resolution sizes. Of your choosing. There are options for ratios and presets. To crop this image for an Instagram post, let's use 1080 by 1080 pixels with a high resolution. Crop off this dark edge. And here is the Instagram post. To extend this background, select the content away field. Drag just like this, click done, and Photoshop will extend the background automatically. Let's crop the front page of this book using the crop tool. That didn't go well. To crop an image like this, use perspective crop tool. Select, click on the four corners. Zoom in to ensure we have the best selection. Very good. Next, the slice tool. Shortcut is letter C. The slice tool is used especially in web designs. It divides an image into smaller slices and exports them individually. Click and drag to create a user slice. 
Photoshop automatically creates more slices of the same image. Now I'm export, save for web. You can export directly to web or save as image only. Export to use slides, selected slices or all slices. Let's quickly view our exported file on my desktop. The image is divided and exported in five slices. Slice selection tool. Slice selection tool, shortcut C, select slices. Next group, the frame tools, shortcut is letter K. Use the rectangular and elliptical frame tools to frame images. Select the frame tool. Make a selection of the serial. The tool creates additional layer with a mask. Drag the hippo over here. Adjust the hippo. Very nice. Next group, the eyedropper tool. Shortcut is letter I. The eyedropper tool samples pixels. Select the eyedropper tool. Click on anywhere on the canvas, image or part of the image to sample its color. Next, color sampler tool. Shortcut is letter I. This tool displays the RGB and CMYK color values as you click or hover over a color. Copy the color info and use it. Right click to delete. Ruler, shortcut letter I. Ruler measures the distances, angles, and locations. To see if the ruler tool can measure objects accurately, let's create a rectangle with known dimensions so we can measure it afterwards. Width 300 pixels and height 500 pixels. Let's see if the ruler will be able to give us these measurements. Select the ruler. I will extend the ruler a little bit to affect the accuracy of the measurement. Please pay attention. I'm measuring from the left to the right. We have 301.33 pixels instead of 300 pixels. That's because I extended my measurement a little bit. Now let's measure the height of the rectangle with precision down to up. 500 pixels. It records negative 500 pixels when you measure down to up and 500 pixels when you measure up to down. Absolute number is what matters. To so straighten an image angled in a certain way like this image, select the ruler, click here, stretch to the end, straighten layer. Now adjust the image. Next, note tool, shortcut letter I. This simply makes notes that can be attached to an image. Select, click, and write a note. Drop instructions and tips. Darken a little. Remove. Click this arrow to navigate. Next, count tool. Shortcut is letter I. Use this tool to count, literally. Select the count tool. Now there are zero counts. You can change the marker color, size, increase the label size. Then click to count and watch the option bar as the count increases from zero to the number of your last click. You can also group your counts, say big rams, small rams, you know. Next group, spot healing tool, shortcut letter J. Use this tool to remove spots and unwanted objects from your photo. Just paint over the spot, it's gone. Do the same to these big pimples. Create a new layer. Ensure that sample all layers is checked. Very effective. Here is before and after. Before and after. Next, remove tool. Shortcut letter J. Select the remove tool. Adjust the brush size. Create a new layer. Without checking sample all layers, you will get this error message. 
Always check this box when working on a blank or multiple layers. Paint over the ring to remove it. Before and after. Healing brush tool, shortcut letter J. The healing brush tool repairs imperfections in an image by painting over them with a sample. Select the healing brush tool. Take a sample from the reference source. To take a sample, hold the Alt or Option key and click. Release the key and click on the pimples. Take a sample from the source closer to the pimple you want to cover. I want three persons running on this track, so I create a new layer. Hold the Alt or Option key to select the reference photo, then paint. Change the color of their tops, and here we are. Patch tool. Shortcut is letter J. The patch tool uses a sample or pattern to repair imperfections in a selected area of an image. Draw around the object to select it. Choose source or destination. With source selected, Photoshop will replace the source image, in this case, the boat. You need to spend more time to refine this area. When destination is selected, it duplicates the selected options in the destination. Content Away Move Tool, shortcut J. With the Content Away Move Tool, you can move or extend objects in a photo. Let's begin with moving an object. Let's decrease the color to zero. Select the bird and move it over here. You notice the bed was moved, but its background color didn't change. Now let's increase the color to 10 and move the bird again. Its background color blended with the destination background. Now let's choose Extend. Select the bird, move it over here. Now resize it. Duplicate and make it bigger. We can also extend the height of this pillar by making it taller. Next is the red eye tool, shortcut is letter J. The red eye tool removes the red eye caused by the reflection of a flash. Select the red eye tool, adjust this setting. Click on the eye to remove the redness. Next group, the brush tool, shortcut is letter B. The brush tool paints brush strokes. Select the brush tool, go to option, adjust the setting, size, the hardness, type of brush, and so on. Choose a color and brush. You can take a sample from anywhere, adjust the color, create a new layer, and brush away. to blend multiple images or, or layers. Here we have the mountains and the girl in the background layer. Above this layer, we have water and boats. To blend the two layers, press D on your keyboard to reset color to default. Black foreground and white background. Apply a mask. It doesn't work. That's because the foreground must be black. So switch the colors by pressing X on your keyboard. Now brush to reveal the background layer. Switch colors to hide the background layer. The pencil tool, shortcut letter B. Select the pencil tool, adjust the setting and use it like your normal pencil to paint hard edge strokes. Make it smoother. Color replacement tool, shortcut letter B. The color replacement tool replaces a selected color with a new one. Select the color replacement tool, adjust the setting, mode, and paint this cap.
mixer brush tool shortcut letter b the mixer brush tool blends colors first let's select our model by going to select subject layering mask delete the mask apply add a solid color to the layer below Press Ctrl J to duplicate layer 1. Select layer 1. Adjust the mixer brush setting. Customize your setting or choose a preset. Click and drag to create a colorful design. You can still change your background color if you wish. Next group, Clone Stamp to Shortcut letter S. The Clone Stamp tool uses a sample of the image to clone the image. The cast left eye is impaired, but with Photoshop magic, we can give this cat a brand new eye. Hold the Alt or Option key to take a sample from the good eye, then paint over the impaired eye. And we have just cloned a new eye for this cat. It's simply amazing. To cover unwanted objects, take a sample and cover this flag. Pattern Stamp Tool, shortcut letter S. The Pattern Stamp Tool paints with parts of an image as a pattern. Select the Pattern Stamp Tool. Select a pattern. Click here to adjust the setting. Select the brush type and size. Then select brush, increase the spacing. Check the impressionist and it will extract the colors in the pattern. Next group, history brush tool and art history brush tool, shortcut letter Y. Let's first use the art history brush tool. The Art History Brush tool paints with stylized strokes. Select the tool, adjust the setting. Mode, opacity, and style. Now we are choosing tight shot. Click the ear to see the effect. Loose medium, click. Dab, click. You can change the blending mode. Now let's go to History Brush Tool. We applied tight short style effect on the left ear, loose medium on the right ear, and at last, dab. If you want to undo the first effect on the left ear, we we'll have to undo everything, but we don't want to undo everything. You see, that's where the History Brush Tool comes in. Select the History Brush Tool and brush the left ear. It goes back in history and returns the ear the way it was. It won't create any effects of its own. Next group, Eraser Tool, shortcut letter E. The Eraser Tool erases pixels. Select the Eraser Tool, adjust the setting, click and drag to erase pixels. Next, Background Eraser Tool, shortcut letter E. Select the Background Eraser Tool, select Limit. I like Find Edges. Reduce tolerance for a single color background like this one. Click and drag to turn color background transparent. Be careful around the edges. Very good. Magic Eraser Tool, shortcut letter E. With a single click, the Magic Eraser Tool erases solid colored area to transparency. It didn't affect these areas. To erase the entire background, uncheck contiguous and click. Maze Group Gradient Tool. Shortcut letter G. The gradient tool creates different shapes of blends between colors. Click and drag across for black and white gradient. Photoshop has linear, radial, angle, reflected, and diamond gradients. Click here to switch colors. Differ is for smooth transition. Click here to select from preset gradients. Go to Window and activate gradients. Click on this button to change the color. You can add a new color button by clicking here. 
Next, Paint Bucket Tool, shortcut letter G. The Paint Bucket Tool fills areas that have similar color with the foreground color. Use the Paint Bucket Tool to fill this background with foreground color. Change the foreground color and click on the background. You can also use it to fill selections. Next group, Blur Tool, shortcut letter R. The Blur Tool blurs an image or part of it. Select the Sharpen Tool and brush the area you want to sharpen. Before and after. Smudge Tool. Select the Smudge Tool and click and drag like this. Let's cause an earthquake effect around here. Next group, the Dodge Tool. Shortcut is letter O. Use the Dodge Tool to lighten the image. Watch the highlight. Burn Tool. Shortcut letter O. Use the Burn Tool to darken the image. Sponge Tool. Shortcut letter O. Use the Sponge Tool to increase or reduce color saturation. Next group, the Pen Tool, shortcut letter P. The Pen Tool draws smooth edged path and makes sharp selections. Click to create an anchor point. The Pen Tool connects two anchor points to create a path. To select this cap, click and drag around the cap. Click on Mask. Click Selection. Use the Pen Tool to select this part and fill it with solid black. Freeform Pen Tool, short course letter P. Use it to draw freeform paths. Make a selection and apply adjustment. Curvature tool, shortcut letter P. Select the curvature tool, click to create a curvature. Let's select the egg. Notice the spaces around here. We need to add anchor points to be able to close these gaps. Click to add anchor points. Now hold the Alt or Option key to turn it to the Red Selection tool. Now we can close the gap. Too many anchor points make your selection wonky. So use the Delete Anchor Point tool. To delete the ones you don't need. Now that's perfect. Make a selection. Next is Convert Point Tool. Convert Point Tool converts smooth anchor points to corner points. Click on the smooth anchor point to convert it to a corner point. Click on the corner anchor point and drag to convert it to smooth anchor point. Next group. Text tool, shortcut letter T, horizontal text tool. Select the text tool and adjust this setting. At the property panel, you change the font type. Filter fonts by their classes. 
adjust the size, spacing, and color. Click to type. Change the colors. Change alignment and cases. Vertical text tool, shortcuts, letter T. Click to type text vertically. Next, vertical type mask tool and horizontal type mask tool, shortcut letter T. Let me demonstrate with horizontal type tool. It creates a selection. Mask the image and here we are. Or instead of masking, press the backspace or delete key to create this. Next group, path selection tool, shortcut letter A. Use the path selection tool to select entire path. Direct selection tool, shortcut letter A. Direct selection tool selects and transforms specific anchor point. Next group, shapes, short call letter U. Click and drag to draw a square or a rectangle. Hold the shift key to create a perfect square. Click this widget and drag it inwards to round the corners. Double click this widget to round only this corner. Select any shape, click on the canvas, and enter your preferred parameters. Click OK. You can change the fill, the stroke, the circle. The polygon, the line, the custom shape tool. Select the custom shape. Come over here and select from the preset. Click and drag to create the image. You can as well create your own custom shape using shapes or paths. Let's use shapes. Go to edit and click on define custom shape. Save the shape. Now click on custom shape. Come up here, scroll down to select the shape we just created. Click and drag to create the shape. You can use it to create a clipping mask like this. The hand tool, shortcuts letter H. Use the hand tool to move the canvas around. The rotate tool, shortcuts letter R. Use the rotate tool to rotate the canvas. Zoom tool, shortcut letter Z. Zoom in and out. Click here to edit the toolbar. Restore default. Foreground and background colors. Black is the default foreground color and white is the default background color. Press X to switch the colors or switch here. Click on any of them to change the color. Edit in quick mask mode. Shortcut the letter Q. Edit in quick mask mode makes selections by painting. Double click to adjust the mask setting. You can either mask the area or mask the selected area. Change the color. Select the brushes. Adjust setting and brush the area you want to mask. Click here or press Q on your keyboard, then add adjustment. Change screen mode, shortcut letter F. Just press F multiple times to change from standard screen mode to full screen mode with menu bar and finally full screen mode. I really appreciate you are watching this video and I would like to know if you find it interesting. Please take a moment to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.